Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this particular episode we're still working on the base mesh getting ready for sculpting. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Ok so now we've got to edit the shape just slightly to get close to the final detail. With our sculpt we only really want to be detailing, we don't want to be changing the shape too drastically. Ideally we'll be using this initial shape and topology for the low poly that will bake the information to. If that doesn't make much sense then do look at my how to make amazing models for film and games, link in the description. Ok so what I'm going to want to do is to squeeze these ends in. I might have to change the topology slightly then because it might lose its sort of planar quality which is a sort of flat surface quality and we don't want to see these ridges in here but we'll see how we go. So we'll certainly want to be bringing this edge in. So if I go to edge mode with 2 and alt left click to select an edge loop and shift alt left click to select another one we can then bring this together so GG to edge slide and it will slide together like this. Now you'd think I'd want to go all the way to the end but actually it is helpful to have a slight squared off end because a sharp corner sometimes doesn't work well with the normal maps and we'll see more about that later. Also I'm just going to bring it backwards slightly so GG to edge slide and slide it in slightly. I'm going to press E for even so it evenly distributes those and hold down shift so it moves in small increments. So hopefully it will be fairly even throughout the mesh. It's not too bad. So on the edge slide options when you press GG you've got the even there and E is the shortcut for that. Ok we need to bring this line in as well because this line is our actual blade line. Let's just check that with the reference image so I'll go to 1 for front view, wireframe mode so we can see it and yet the blade is coming through here. Now having a quick look it does seem like there is a fairly jagged edge here and maybe I want to do another loop cut in here somewhere. So let's just select these two here. GG to edge slide those and these two here GG to edge slide and I'll press Control R and see where that's going. Now that's not too bad for now we can sort out the topology a bit more later. So I'll do a loop cut through there. If you've got it going through your mesh in a really weird way then just use the knife tool and cut it into one of these vertices around here. So I'm going to grab that edge there GG. Notice I'm box selecting those two vertices and let's even these up a little bit so we've got a smoother transition around here and I'll edge slide these a bit more, GG. Ok there's a smoother transition now and that should look a bit better. Let's go back to solid mode and try and sort out the blade a bit more. So into edge mode with 2 and let's select this edge going down here, here and here and we'll bring that together as well. Let's look from top view now and G then Y to move it in on the Y axis and let's get that fairly flat so it looks like a blade going in. Ok the rest of it is fairly wide so I think what I'm going to do is go to front view, 3 to face mode and C to circle select and select all these faces up to this point here. With circle select you press C to activate it, left click to select, middle click to deselect and right click to come out of circle select mode. And then I'm going to bring those in. So back round to the top let's press G to grab and move those in in the Y axis very slightly to about there. Ok so now we'll go around to the other side here so I'll Alt A to deselect all those, C to circle select and select these ones coming out to the end here. I can change that circle with the wheel and right click to come out of it and G then Y and let's bring those in. Let's just see how we're looking. Is it making sense? Just about. And let's select these two and these two I think. I'm going to use proportional edit for this so proportional edit up here or O's the shortcut. Let's go to top view again, G then Y and I'll make my circle just a bit bigger and bring that in just a touch. Ok let's see how that's looking. That seems to be ok. I think these end ones need to go in a bit more so let's grab these, G then Y. Still got circle select on so I'll reduce that slightly to about there, bring those in and I think that looks good. So like I was trying to say at the beginning this is just the base mesh that we're working from and we probably will use this as our low poly mesh, we'll edit it maybe slightly but for now the most important thing is getting ready for sculpt and sculpting details. So we're trying to get as close as possible to the outline shape which it does seem to be 
And then we can start sculpting some details, scratches, notches, and so forth on this. Okay, a few more details to do, like the handle as well. So let's go to front view with that and think about where the straps for the handle might go. So into object mode, select the handle. Let's go to X-ray for this and into edit mode. So the strap starts about here and finishes here. We've kind of got our edges linking up, but I'll just select this one down here. And I've still got proportional edit on, so I'll press G to grab, move my circle of influence, and just move those into a position where I think the strap can go. This is a little bit rough on the artwork, so I'll bring it around here. Okay, so now I've got those. I'm going to actually make a separate object just for the sake of sculpting. So I'll go to face mode and select this face loop here, here and here. That's Alt, left click and Shift Alt click to select multiple. And when you're selecting face loops, you select the edge that's going across the face loop that you want. Okay, so I've got all those. I want to duplicate those, Shift D and Alt S to scale those. Oh, I've still got proportional edit, so it's grabbing all of them. So I'll undo that, turn off proportional edit. Alt S will scale by the normals and push them outwards. And that should be about the right size for a strap. That's good. And then I can press P to separate the selection I've got and make it a new object. So let's go back into solid mode and have a look at that. It's possibly a bit thick, but we can change that a little bit with the sculpt and see how we get on. Let's go into object mode, choose our new object and into edit mode with that. Select the edge loop going around here. So two to go to edge mode, Alt left click and then fill that in. And the same with this one. Alt left click and F to fill and fill that in. Okay, so the strap's probably looking a little thick. Let's go back to X-ray mode and to front view. And yes, it is a bit thick really, isn't it? So we'll select those faces again and Alt S and just scale them in slightly. It's probably more around here, isn't it? Now I will remesh this, so I'm not too worried about the quad topology at the end here and here. Let's just go back into solid mode so we can see it clearly. But when I convert them for my low poly mesh, I want these two joined together, so I don't need to worry about the topology in here just for the moment. As a base mesh for sculpting, this will work nicely. Okay, what we also need is these sort of hoops as if it could attach to some sort of chain and be thrown and pulled backwards. That's easy enough, we can just bring some toruses in here. So into object mode with tab, shift right click to move my 3D cursor, shift A to add, mesh and torus. Now again, we will need to change these segment numbers. 16 looked about right, so let's try that again. 16 across there. Let's just have a quick look around. I think that's going to work okay. We probably don't need as many minor segments, so we can maybe go down to eight with those. Let's see how that's looking again. It's fairly detailed, but I think that should be fine. Now, one thing that you will want to do is play with the major and minor radius until you get a shape that you think works. So if I bring the major radius in and then the minor radius, until I actually get to the size I roughly want, which is probably around there. I might as well do the rotation now as well, which is rotate around the x-axis 90 degrees. You can see there, and let's actually sort of push it into position slightly with one. I'm doing all this now so I can get the position right and therefore get the size of the radius, especially the minor radius is the one we really want. If that goes wrong, it's really hard to fix and change it after you've made the model. Okay, so, my artwork's not particularly good here. Let's just see what it actually looks like zoomed out. I think a little bit smaller. Somewhere around there, I think. Okay, so that's great. Shift A to add another one, mesh, and then torus. And it keeps the same settings apart from the rotation. So we'll just quickly rotate around the X 90 degrees. This time we want to rotate in the Z slightly as well. And let's just bring it down slightly. So in the Z, and I'm just clicking and dragging on the numbers so I can move them up and down freely. Okay, it's not linked, but that shouldn't matter too much. I'm going to make this one slightly bigger. So just changing the major radius should work rather than changing the minor radius. So they are actually the same size in terms of that minor radius going around here. Okay, so about there, I think is going to work fine. Let's start moving them into position a bit more now. So G, then Y, this one, let's just grab by hand. So G, and then just put them on top of each other. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now the straps will take a slightly different technique, so I'll do those in the next video. Now you do have to be a little bit careful of details like this because if you're animating this axe, this chain link here would move around slightly. So this is possibly a bit naughty really, and that's something to think about for game objects. I'm going to leave it in because I quite like the look of it. In this case, I don't think it will matter too much, but that is something to bear in mind 
If you have any sort of dangly bits or chains or anything like that, they can be really awkward to animate. So generally, you'd leave those out unless it was really important to your game dynamic in some way. Okay, so we're almost there with the detail and we'll be on to sculpting soon. Just got to do the straps, which we'll work on a bit next time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.